up guys, Hector here from Fruit Boot, and this is the long anticipated review of the FR UFR Anthony Potier Pro Model Skate. Whew, that was a lot. All right, so I've been skating these for about six months now, and I feel like I can give a good, honest review on these. Let's start with the fit up. As I have them set up right now, they fit my feet perfectly as far as width and length wise. They're very similar to like an M12, like a narrower fit, but obviously a little wider, probably more like leaning towards a colt or a sway. So the liner, as you could tell, I'm using the Rain Camo Liner. It's this similar to a V3 liner. The reason why I'm not using the stock liners is uh, for this reason right here. Don't have a neoprene toe right there. It's like kind of stiff. And I mean, they don't hurt per se, but there's a, a bit of slight pressure on my on top of my big toe. So I feel that if uh, they had a neoprene toe, I wouldn't have that. Maybe if they did like from right here, this whole toe cap in neoprene, these liners would be perfect. I love the plushiness right here around the ankles because it locks your heel in. You don't get any heel lift, but moving right along. So at first I was riding these with uh, Create Original Frames is I did buy these boot only for about $200 from uh, Broward Blades. As you know, they come in different uh, variations. You have the standard boot only, and then you have the one with the Anthony Potier flat frames, which he rides 65 millimeters flat. And then you have the boot only with the Intuition liner, and that runs you about $290. Honestly, uh, knowing what I know now, I probably would have gone with the Intuition version, only because it's it's the best deal, uh, best bang for your buck. And uh, you get <clears throat> an excellent boot with a $200 Intuition liner. It's kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> about the sole plate now as you can see I've been putting some work on this sole plate and it's kind of starting to round out but eh, not really it's kind of holding up to get it's holding up really well actually the problem that I'm facing right now is they are starting to get a bit slower sometimes I'm also like sticking on to whatever I'm trying to grind, whether it's a ledge or a box, um, but they have been slowing down quite a bit, which is probably expected as you wear them down, they're gonna uh, slow down. So that's why you see uh, I put the Featherlight 3 frames on here because I didn't know whether it was my frame that was slowing me down or the sole plate, but I could definitely confirm that the sole plate is slower. Uh, the backslide groove lines up great with the frame, no matter what frame I put on there, I feel confident with my Royales. Okay. Um, so let's talk about some of the negatives or things that I don't really like about this skate that, or they can improve. Uh, number one, definitely a neoprene toe for the liner would be uh, number one. Number two, I would definitely upgrade this buckle to an aluminum one. See, it's got the little push tab right here. This seems like the same cheap Chinese buckle that everybody uses. And I mean, it works. It locks on, doesn't 
go anywhere, but eventually it is gonna wear down because uh, this buckle protection right here is a little too far forward to actually protect the buckle. So you can see some starting to grind down right on the metal parts of the buckle. I'm also experiencing a bit of sticking with the receiver part of the buckle. Laces are really tough and they're double stitched. Don't, yeah, they're stitched right down the middle to make them more durable. The bad thing is the lace tips, they just fall off so easily. Um, easy fix to that some uh, metal lace tips on Amazon and fix those up, but I would like to see the skate manufacturer put on some better laces or lace tips on here. But anyway, there's no plastic insert in here. All it is, is a foam pad glued to the bottom of it. Now, the good thing with that is it absorbs some of the shock. The bad thing is it's glued onto the bottom of the boot. So in order for you to remove the T-nuts, if you had to, you'd have to rip out the foam padding out of the boot. Good thing about the inside here though, is that they have these foam pads on the sides to help protect the liner. You can see my side of the liner got some kind of wear. It's got a little bit of wear on the sides, which is kind of normal. It's gonna happen regardless. I mean, there's a lot of moving around and friction inside. So, so far I gotta say, this is one of uh, the best skates I've ever owned in a long time. So all in all, I think $200 boot only, uh, you can't beat it. If you already have a frame and wheels set up and you don't want to buy a whole setup and you want a solid boot, uh, I would definitely recommend this. Basically, this is just an unskinned Seba skate. It's got the same boot design, same heel, same cuff style and everything. When I first purchased these, I thought they were gonna come with adjustable cuff height, but as you can see, it's just standard cuff bolt, which is fine. And uh, they actually don't come out as much as others do. I would definitely recommend having an adjustable height on the cuff because not everybody likes to ride with a cuff so high. Uh, me personally, I do like my cuffs high and my skate rather stiff, which is how I would describe this. Uh, gives you a lot of support and it gives you confidence. The best part about this boot is, and the reason why I bought this boot, is because you could change it to an urban uh, or recreational skate which it was originally designed for anyway. So why not take advantage of that? So after a little street session with the guys, I decided to uh, switch my frames out to a ground control three by 110 setup. And I went down a bike trail. Yeah, it felt, the boot felt solid. Um, I didn't feel like I was gonna break my ankles. It was a bit intimidating at first, trying to ride 110s for the first time. But um, as I started cruising around and getting used to the height of it, it was just rollerblading. Uh, so if you do have a wide foot and you wanna ride these skates, I've seen that some people will remove the slider protector here out and inside the boot just remove the receivers out of there there they'll, they'll be under a little piece of foam you probably just have to like cut it out with an exacto knife or something and just pull the hardware out of there and that'll give you a little bit more room 
uh, for width. All right, so my final thoughts on this uh, FR UFR is I would probably give it an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, only for those few things there. Um, the buckle and the liner definitely needs a neoprene toe. All right, guys. So I guess that's all I got for you. And um, as always, keep on rolling.